Hey everyone, David C. Anderson, as well as... Seth V. Welcome to Knife AQ episode 160, the Knife series, where we answer all your questions sharp or dull, and we're here for a very special episode today. We're taking a look at some cheap knives that feel expensive. Let's get into it. Uh, Thomas is still on uh, a little bit of a break, so we enlisted Tom, our photographer, again, as well as uh, Josh, one of our product specialists, to do the uh, camera switching here. We had to get two people, and we still couldn't get uh, <laughs> to, to replicate what Thomas does, and it's still not as good as what Thomas does, but that's fine. <laughs> no fault of their own. Thomas is just that good. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're recording live to tape, essentially, here, uh, so if anything uh, messed up happens, you get to see it firsthand. Um, but here's what happens with uh, this FAQ series is we take your questions down in the comment section below. So if you've got a, uh, a question you want it considered for a future episode, please leave it below. Uh, today, instead of our uh, normal multi-question format, Seth and I are going to tackle one question uh, for the length of the episode that kind of sparked us to think about, um, or, or we had fun thinking about it, um, and we've each picked things independently so we, I don't know what he's picked, and he doesn't know what I picked, so we're going to be able to react kind of as we go. The question today comes from Kid666. Uh, hey, DCA, I recently got laid off. What knife would you recommend for opening bags of chips, unemployment checks, and gives me a bit of serotonin to lift my spirits? Um, okay, so this is obviously don't go buying something that's going to put yourself uh, in any you know worse financial situation. just has to be said up front. But... The thought process we had was, you know, obviously you're on a budget, so we don't want to recommend something real expensive, but you, you actually use the word, Seth, pride of ownership. Yeah. Um, so we're looking for something that feels elevated, feels like something you could be proud of, yeah? Yeah. Anything to add? Well... Live on tape? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, for me, there are kind of two ways you can cut this question, uh, especially if you're really, really trying to keep the budget low you know, well under $100 for sure. Uh, you can either go for features or you can go for feel. And I think kind of going either one of those ways, you can get a ton of knife for your money, something really special, something that is going to give you some legitimate pride um, mm -hmm. to own, even without having to spend, you know, prestige amounts of money. Uh, so for your picks, um, is there a theme running? Did you go more for feel in general or did you go more for features? Uh, I kind of went both ways and tried to explore okay. the ideas. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I concentrated mine on the feel a little bit more, things that, that felt expensive. Mm -hmm. And that's an ethereal thing. It's, it's not definable exactly. But I wanted that, that elevated feel for the stuff that, that I chose yeah. out here. Um, so there's, like, you can certainly get as good of a knife as a tool for less money than the stuff I have in my little pouch right here. Um, I mean, the stuff you can get nowadays for 20 to 30 bucks is, as a tool, Yeah. you don't need, quote unquote, need more, um, but I wanted that feel. So that, that's, where, that's where I went. Nice. Um, shall I pull one out first and then we'll, uh, we'll trade off as yeah. we go? Um, so the first one, I'm gonna move my bag out of the way. All of these are some pretty, fairly new releases that I brought to the table. And the first is from CRKT with the Padawan Flipper. Nice. Right here. Um, this one impressed me right off the bat when they unveiled it this year. It's about 65 bucks. Um, the materials don't particularly set themselves apart at that price range, but it's what they do with them um, that truly elevate it. And the materials are good, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. We've got stainless steel with a frame lock. We've got canvas micarta inlays on the front and on the back and on the back spacer. But the blade is where it really takes it up a notch. Just over three inches, 14C28N blade steel, good Sandvik stuff. But look at what they did to it. At this price range especially, you've got a horizontal grain finish on a hollow ground knife. Like that takes some extra doing. Yeah. Uh, and to keep the price where it is to ant while doing that is impressive. And not only did they crown the spine on this, but it's also highly polished, too. That's a beautiful touch. And the finishing on this is just excellent. And it's a great little design. Flips really well. You got ball bearings in the pivot, non-assisted, fully manual. 
and two blade shapes. The, uh, the modified Warncliffe has black uh, inlays and this more slightly Ness Monkey blade, which is of course why I picked this one, has the natural. What do you think of that, Mr. Seth? This is a knife that feels a lot more special than its price would lead you to believe. Like, even on closer inspection, it's got details that set it apart. The custom sort of pivot screw with the extra ornamentation there feels special. Mm -hmm. You know, those details you mentioned, the crown's fine, the polishing. I mean, they even bring, brought that crowning into the front of the flipper tab right there on the front. Yeah. Little things like that, you know, as you're moving your fingers around the knife and using it, you, you're going to notice that. You're going to feel it, and it, it's comfortable. It gives us, well, it gives it a literal sense of polish. Yeah, yeah. And I love that those, like, like I said, the blade is really what sets it apart. Like, the, the handle is good, is fine, but the blade is extra special. And every time you go to cut with it, you see those extra special bits. You see that, that reflectivity off the spine. Yeah. You see that nice horizontal, uh, like, it looks like a hand satin finished, like, custom yeah. type of finish, like, actual hand sanded finish. Um, I'm sure at this price range, that it's not hand sanded, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's just like you get to appreciate those fine details every single time. So that's that's my first pick. Sweet. Well, I the first one I have in my secret little bag here is also a CRKT. Mm -hmm. I really think they're the brand to beat when it comes to knives like this. Okay. Knives that feel special but don't cost special. <laughs> I like this knife. That's, yeah. that's an interesting pick. This so one, this this is a features pick kind of. Yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm preempting you. Go 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 go. This is the Slacker. It is on sale now for thirty-four dollars and ninety-five cents. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when this first came out, it was like seventy-five or eighty bucks. I want to say like it was, it was a little more expensive than I think that hampered it out of the gate. But that's thirty bucks. Yeah, this is a genuine surprise on my part. I'm not putting this on. That is great. It's a good deal. Um, the the materials are not elevated, but I think they're on par for the sale price for sure. It's got one point four one one six steel. Uh, but, you know, the handles are aluminum, mm -hmm. which kind of sets it apart, especially at the price range. That's a good bit of texture. Good bit of texture. Ken it's got design. Yeah, Ken Onion, he knows how to design yes. a knife. In fact, he knows how to design hundreds of knives. Yes, yes. From the, the very, in, very affordable to the very expensive, too. Like Definitely. Truly. The design here, I think, is very elegant. It's, it's you know, something that's that's comes from a place of deep knowledge about knives. So you get something that's just gonna kind of feel accommodating to your needs the way a really well-designed EDC knife does. Uh, and, you know, the, the CRKT just delivers when it comes to feeling special. Like, from the texture of the handles that kind of offset the somewhat slippery nature of aluminum to really the standout feature here, which is the field strip mm -hmm. mechanism. Um, now that this is on sale, it's kind of crazy you can get it for that price, but. I might try, like, that means our cost is probably lower. I might pick one up myself. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a genuinely good deal. Nice deep carry pocket clip. And, you know, I, I may not do it on camera here, but you can take this knife apart in a matter of seconds. With no tools. No tools, yeah. put it back together just as easily. It's, it's fun to do. It's nice to be able to do that if your knife gets extra dirty, and uh, one of those little things, little little feather in the cap yeah. for pride of ownership. Well, if you're, if you're sitting at home, like, you know, working on finding that next gig, and, you know, you just need to pass the time, you know, taking the knife apart, you know, giving it a little extra care, mm -hmm. it can burn a few minutes, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a cool one. That's an interesting pick. And, and what I like about this is this is not at all the direction I kind of went in my head. Um, so it's cool to see, you know, your thought process on this. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, I'll pull my next one out. In terms of a premium feel, again, I'm, I'm going for feel a lot. This next one is, in some ways, gives you, I think, even more than the Padawan for a little bit less. The blade itself isn't as elevated as on the Padawan, but the handles are, are the, the showpiece here. Um, and that is the Petrified Fish Hourglass. Ooh, I'm going to stop you right there because... Ooh. I stand up out of frame here. 
I too brought a petrified fish hourglass ah. to the table. <laughs> and I, I was almost certain that you were going to pick this because the deal really is spectacular for what you get. Okay, so let me, let me run you through this. Before <laughs> I even like, fully open it up, like already here you can see it looks special. Price on this is 59 bucks, 58.99 if you want to get super specific. And you've got sandalwood handles, titanium bolsters on this at a sub $60 price. It's crazy. Three and a half inch blade, crazy elegant looking design. Maybe elegant's not quite the right word, but there's certainly a, an element of that, but a very like, well-considered shape. It's dramatic mm -hmm. in a way. K110 tool steel, which is name brand D2. Like they could have gone with, you know, any, any foundry pull, putting together yeah. a, a D2 formulation. They actually got the Austrian made stuff. Austrian, yeah, Bowler stuff. Yeah. It's Austrian made. Um, that adds expense. The wood here, sandal, it looks almost like desert ironwood. The titanium, like I said, is such a nice touch. You've got the ball bearings in the pivot. Flipping action is excellent. Uh, you can see what I mean. Compare the blades to the paddle on there. No crown spine, no horizontal uh, grain on the petrified fish here. Uh, it's just a simple, you know, belt satin and you know, flattened top. Everything is like done perfectly. Yeah, like, very, it's, very clean work. Yeah, it's it's. It's not even, it doesn't feel like down to a price at all. It's, it just doesn't have that extra level that the, uh, the Padawan's blade does. And that's a heck of a lot of knife. It's, it's more knife for less money than the Padawan from the you know, value for, for money quotient as a tool. Do you want to fancy your handle or do you want to fancy your blade? That's the question between these two, I think. Yeah. So you picked one also. That's well, you hold on to that because I have the same knife in here. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to bring out the packaging, actually, because I think mm. it's, it's part of what elevates this and makes it feel so much more you know, fancy and pricey than it actually is. Once you get the box open, which itself is kind of unique, you sort of like unseal it with mm -hmm. a little, little tear-off tab. Yeah, yeah. Um, you get this pouch, which is something you don't get on, well, any of my other picks, at least. Custom zip zipper pull. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, comes with some extras, you know? Got a... Sticker, got a cloth, extra, extra hardware. hardware in there, and Which there's actually, the knife. I'm wondering if that's titanium hardware. I don't know, because uh, if someone wanted to like customize an anode of those, they might be able to. I don't know yeah, if they I are, though. So. I'm just, I'm, I don't know the answer to that question. So the whole thing, the whole package is really well considered, like from from the custom zipper pull and the little details that, that of, of extra branding to the design itself, which you yeah. mentioned, I mean, it's, yeah. It's just a lot going on, but it's very cohesive. It's fun. It's a little flamboyant in the very best way. Mm -hmm. It's a great, very elevated feeling knife. Like even when, when I first showed this on a uh, new knives of the week video, like I've, I've got my reference over here always. I've got my, my laptop with uh, you know the, our pages up on the website so I can look up prices, specs, all of that. And I didn't, I didn't even register the price of it until we were filming. And as I looked at the price, I'm like, wait, are we sure about that? <laughs> like, it, there's no way this feels like a, a $59 knife. It is easily double that, I would say. I would argue. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool one. I had yeah. a feeling you were going to pick it. <laughs> Great minds think alike. <laughs> we're going to go with that anyway. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. For you, what do we, what do we Let's have do it. here? This one is 100% a features pick. This is the SRM9201. Mm. This knife is $30, $29.95. It's got G10 handles, crossbar lock, and D2 steel. And if you really wanted to buy this design on a budget, you could get it for as little as $20. Yeah, for like, it's got stainless and uh, injection molded handles. Exactly, yeah. 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 So you compromise a little bit on the handle and blade materials, but it's the same design and it feels and operates just as well. Um, perfectly executed crossbar lock. Full size design, that's gotta be three and a half inches. Just about, yeah, yeah. looks about it. Cool clip point blade. I mean, the design itself is, there's nothing cheap about this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's well considered. It's got a uh, nicely sculpted or milled G10 backspacer. Um, even the pocket clip has a little bit of extra detail to it. They've kind of raised up the fold of it to help. Oh yeah, like it's pocketed, but it, it comes out 
and and up. Yeah, they just kind of give you a little bit more space to get over the uh, handle screw or the um, the screws holding the pocket clip in on your pocket. It's the kind of knife that's going to be really enjoyable and easy to live with. That's going to work really well, and you know, when you find another job and, and get a little more get more knife budget, this is going to make a great beater to just keep yep. around and yep. use with abandon without feeling like a beater. Yeah. Um, like even the the twenty dollar one, we um, we actually used one for a little bit at one point. We you know got a sample and there was like I had zero complaints about it. At that twenty dollar price, especially like mm -hmm. you know simpler stainless injection molded handles, but the action was just like this. That crossbar lock works great. Uh, it's reversible, so lefties you'll be able to use that as well. Um, yeah, like in terms of knife for the money, this really really gets it, and that's. You know the the other way that you took this uh, this prompt, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a great great usable knife, great tool for sure. Yeah, yeah, very tool tastic. This yeah, thing. yeah. All right, um, the next one I've actually got two together, um, and that is, you know, the, these two that I've already looked at here, the uh, the Padawan and the the Hourglass. Kind of, I don't think you can. I, I didn't see anything that to me felt better than either of these two in terms of premium feel without getting more expensive. You know, 65 bucks is not cheap, cheap, but it's it's not too bad. Um, to get something that felt nicer, I was spending more money on these. So, slip joints. Mm -hmm. The Rosecraft line of slip joints has really been impressing me. And I'm gonna pull out the first one here. This is the Appalachian Jack. And it is, what's, it, what's the price on this? It's 47.50 right now. You got a 3.3 inch D2 blade, high polished black handles. This price range, when we're talking about slip joints for a while now, the stuff you could get has been, has ranged from fair to okay. Yeah, you I know, think that's fair to say. Um, you can spend less money, things start to get a little less fair to okay, but mm -hmm. this is way better than fair to okay. This truly competes with easily double the price point of what you're getting right here. Um, yes, it's not going to be made in America like some of the uh, the classic brands that are still out here uh, nowadays, your cases, your Great Easterns and that sort of thing, but nothing about this feels like a cheap slip joint. Agreed. I mean, the level of polish, the level of finish. I mean, look at how flush that back spring is. Listen to the snap. You got a nice half Ooh, stop. Yeah. It sounds great. And beyond that, you know, high polish black with uh, with the you know nickel silver style hardware is a super classy look. But they're not afraid to do. Since Rosecraft is a new brand, they're not beholden to like classic. Mm -hmm. History in the same way like a Great Eastern or a Case uh, knife might be uh, for, for good and for ill. So they're doing things a little different. I mean, this is a slip joint with a pry bar on the end, for crying out loud. Yeah, it's um, a cool idea. It's cool. It doesn't make it seem too like too much or too over the top. This, this particular design still feels restrained. Yeah. D2 blade steel is going to give you really good edge retention uh, in a, on a slip joint pattern. Uh, and then the other one that I pulled out, which like I said, I'll just do these together because the points are the same, is the uh, Okoe River uh, Kayak Slip Joint. Have you ever seen a slip joint with this type of shape to it before? Hmm. I mean, that is a unique slip joint right there. $54 for this one with bone handles. And again, the polish is like perfect pretty much on it. It's like I don't see anything where I'm like, eh, that looks a little off. Not at all. Yeah, it's all right there. The the one thing, especially like I've done, you know, some some knife making myself, and the one thing that you can run into sometimes with a pinned construction like this, these pins are harder than the material around it, whether mm. it's the the synthetic material here or the bone here. So as you're polishing, which these are both high polished handles, mm -hmm. the pins won't wear down at the same rate, so the pins will oftentimes like bump up Yeah, compared to the surrounding material. You don't get that here at all in a factory finished, factory polished knife. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's kind of insane to me, quite honestly. It's it's impressive work. Slip joints naturally have a lot of uh, character, sort of personality, and um, 
I, I like that they're embracing it with little extras like this. Mm -hmm. um, I was surprised in hand how unobtrusive this was. You know, they've softened the edges just enough to yeah, make crisp, yeah. integrate it into the handle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could see that really being genuinely useful. Gives you a little something extra, yeah. Yeah. In a pinned knife like this, like the whole thing, you know, the whole handle is basically uh, one piece. You know, there is some mm. genuine strength from that type of construction yeah, yeah. to make this a uh, actually useful Price little prior. Yeah. yeah. It's a very cool, it's a cool design and like I said, the, these things I'm saying here, apply them to any one of the, the Rosecraft slip joints. Every single one that I've picked up exhibits like the same characteristics I'm talking about right here. So pick which one you like and go from there. They're, Sweet. they're neat and it's, uh, I'm glad they're on the marketplace. Yeah. Agreed. All right. That's all I've got. You got two more on the table here. I got two more. Um, we'll go through them pretty quick. This next one I think plays off your slip joint suggestion pretty well. This is, this is one for the feel. This mm -hmm. is an Almar mm -hmm. uh, Falcon. No, ah, this is the Hawk. This yeah, is the little yeah, one. Yeah. So this is actually a lockback. Oh, there we go. Jigged bone mm -hmm. comes with a leather pocket slip. And uh, just a very elevated feel to this one. The materials are are, are, I don't know, you know, average for the price. We got OS 8 steel, uh, nickel silver bolsters, brass liners. What is the price on that one? Price is $40. Not too bad at yeah, all. Not man. bad at all. And it's a genuine classic design too. Like this is, you know, there have been more premium versions of this made uh, in the past, um, mm -hmm. you know, prior to the, the new Almar ownership, of course, but like it's a classic design. It's well established and deserving of you know, a bit of iconic status, I'd say. Yeah. Like Forty bucks now. Totally, totally. This little one is is a little hard for me to operate. Like the the thumb stud is just such a short travel path. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm almost wishing I grabbed the uh, larger version, but I went for the one that was most affordable. Yeah, because they're not that much more like the the bigger ones. No. So yeah. the the it goes hawk. This is the hawk with two point seven five inches. The falcon is the middle child with just over three inches of blade. And then the Eagle is a genuinely large knife with That's four, almost four inches. inches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the jig bone here is really nicely That's done. Really nice. um, pinned construction, and I think has some of that pride of ownership. Yeah, for sure. So let's, it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how my, my hands do this if you're having a little bit of a tweak with it. Yeah, it's not too bad. You just, it's, it's a little bit, different than you may be used to, but yeah, like that's- it's not a flickable. No, it's knife. definitely not a flickable knife, but you get used to that pretty quick, I, I would think. I've been enjoying carrying knives like this recently. Mm -hmm. um, that is to say like locking knives without a pocket clip. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fun for a change. It does feel classier, especially if you put it in a slip, there's sort of a ceremony to taking it out. Sure, sure. Taking it out of the pouch, opening it. I see that pouch. Nice pouch, kind of like an untanned leather. Yeah, the edges are finished real nicely mm -hmm. too. It's it, They could have easily cheaped out on this and I, it does not seem cheaped out at all. Sorry, not cool. untanned leather, undyed. Undyed, yeah, 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 yeah. Very cool. That's a cool feel pick right there, I like it. Yeah, yeah, and a classic, like you said. Yeah, yeah, certainly the most classic of anything here on the table, definitely. Nice. And last but not least, what you got there? Last but not least, I got another one from Petrified Fish, just in case you didn't pull that guy out of the pocket. <laughs> um, this one is a, this one kind of splits the difference between specs and feel because yes, it's giving a lot of kind of features for the money in terms of the blade steel. We got D2 steel, as I flip my notes over here. This is the Petrified Fish forward, so it's got D2 steel, $27.99 very affordable, um, but everything on this knife, the way it's been implemented is just so expertly done. The flipping action is phenomenal. The grinds are like crispy clean. And not quite conventional either. It gives you something, you yeah. know, something a little different. Kind of a, like a faceted look. It looks, it's almost got like that hinderer slicer grind thing yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the, your geometry behind that flat grind is a little more stout at the back and thins out as you get towards the top, or the uh, tip, I mean. Mm -hmm. Got deep carry uh, pocket clip, a nested 
liner lock, which to me always kind of elevates the design a little mm -hmm, bit. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And at that price, you've actually got milled G10. There's an actual shape to it. It's not just a flat scale. Like, yep. for, well, for example, this uh, this SRM. It, it does have some detailing going on, but it's you know it's just a flat piece of uh, mm -hmm. essentially flat piece of G10. You've actually got shape going into yeah uh, this petrified fish design. and a, a number of textures too. It might be hard to pick up on this bright blue color, but there's a little bit of uh, I almost want to call it like fluting here on the sides, and mm -hmm. then the center has been milled out. Really nicely done, feels great in the hand. The action is just so fidgetable. If you're looking to, to kill time with a pocket knife, <laughs> a great liner lock flipper is uh, is really fun to use. Yeah, that's a cool grind. Even the swedge is is not just a straight across swedge. Like here, it's deeper here. It meets almost exactly where the, uh, the, the top of the primary grind terminates right here, mm -hmm. which is also right where the drop of the drop point really starts to take over. Like, you know, functionally, would you get more, you know, friction relief if you took the swedge out? Sure. But yeah, this gives you a, you know, a precision in the blade grind that that surprises me at this price. I yeah. mean, that is that is just cool. It's tricky to have a stonewash finish that doesn't sort of soften the, the grind lines too. Yeah, and they've, yeah. they've kept those crisp bevels and yeah. still have a nice stonewashed finish. Yeah, it's not as heavy as a stone of a stonewashed finish as you might get elsewhere, and that's probably, I, I'm guessing, how they managed to achieve that. Yeah. But yeah, that is, that grind is, is really cool. I think that's the standout for me now that I'm looking closer. It was the uh, the handle shape a, a second ago, but yeah, both nice things for, what'd you say, 27 bucks? Yeah. Whew. Wow. Cool. Well, those those are our suggestions, folks. Um, you know, kid six six six. I hope uh, your your situation turns around sooner rather than later. Um, and again, like just general advice to anyone on a budget: don't buy what you can't afford. Okay, like we'll just say that one more time. Um, one more question to tackle today. We weren't going to leave our most serious question. Um, to, to languish. We do, we do have to have our most serious question, which of course comes at the end of every episode. Today's questions come, question comes from uh, CheeseIJ5CD. Um, the question is, how do you sharpen an indestructible knife? I have an answer, but I've, I've like had time to prepare. <laughs> um, so Chuck Norris will strop it against his stubble. That's how you sharpen an indestructible knife, right? Could you use another indestructible knife? Well, I went with Chuck Norris because <laughs> tomorrow is actually Chuck, Norris, Chuck Norris's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Uh, unless he expires between when we film this and when this video posts, in which case this is going to be awkward. <laughs> uh, but he's 81 tomorrow on Sunday the 10th, uh, the same day we, uh, we spring forward here nice. in the States as well on the, uh, on the clock. So Still that's what I would say. Straps it against his stuff. I think that's... Pretty well. work. Yeah. <laughs> all right, folks, that's all we've got this time. Make sure you keep leaving your questions down in the comments, of course. Leave me your most serious questions as well. We take them most seriously. Uh, in the meantime, to get your hands on these knives here that you saw in the video, check out the links in the description, which will take you to KnifeCenter.com. And don't forget about our long-running knife rewards program, which means you know when you buy one of these knives today, you get some free money to spend on your next one. That's it for now. I'm David C. Anderson. I'm Seth V. And that's Tom and Josh behind the camera, making sure we keep the, uh, the trains running here. Thank you both. both uh, let them know how they're doing down in the comments. I think they're doing pretty good. We'll see you folks next time.